Okay, we're now ready to look at eigenvectors and eigenvalues for all matrices now. In fact, we're going to look at uh, or focus on what happens when you have complex eigenvalues and complex eigenvectors. So we'll go over the goals. I'll do some examples to show you what happens when we get complex eigenvalues and the associated with eigenvectors. We're going to look at a special case with rotation matrices and see what we get there. And then finally, a note about complex conjugates and what that means for finding eigenvalues. And uh, by the end of this, you should be able to find eigenvectors and eigenvalues of anything I throw at you. Uh, so how do we define eigenvalues? Eigenvalues are uh, the roots of the characteristic polynomial. And so if we have a polynomial of degree n, that means we have n roots. Everything is fine and easy, uh, except uh, what could happen. Suppose I give you a polynomial like this. Okay, so let's see. So if I want to find the roots of this, I'm just going to use the um, quadratic formula. So 3 squared minus 4 times 10 times 1. Oops, 9 minus 40, that's negative. So what does that mean? Well, that means if I look at this polynomial, so if I call this polynomial f of x, then let's see, so that's going to be something like this. This thing has no real roots, right? So there's no real valued number where this crosses the x-axis. Uh, anywhere it crosses the real axis is going to be a complex number, right? So this is going to be a number that has both real and imaginary parts. Um, and we're basically just going to have to deal with that. So, uh, and here's the thing, is that back in the good old days, people would have gotten to here, stopped, and said, we can't do this. At some point, Gauss and Euler said, why not? Let's just uh, work with this thing called I, see what happens, and miraculous things happen, and we can just get on with our lives and just power through it. So a lot of times in math, what, we're gonna, what you find is that there's usually a clever way to get around things. What we're going to do here is we're just going to power through and just use brute force and get this, and we're not going to worry about any kind of finesse. Okay. So uh, here's the problem. is If I want to find a polynomial of degree n, and I want to find its roots, right? if I have a polynomial of degree 2, that's no problem. But I could have double roots. And I could have no roots. And in these cases, I've got to find a way to deal with this. Right? And the same thing can happen in higher degrees. So for example, if I've got a cubic, I could have a cubic like that. This means I'm going to have one real root and two imaginary roots. I should say complex valued roots. I could have a situation where I've got just two. Or I could have a situation where I've got three roots. Again, we need to be able to figure out how to deal with all these things. And what happens in this case is we're going to get two complex roots and one real valued root. We're going to get uh, two repeated, repeated roots and a uh, one single root here. And here we're going to have three distinct real roots. So if I look at this example here, what happens? If I take the determinant. 1 minus lambda, 4 minus 2, 3 minus lambda. Set that equal to 0. So I'm going to have 1 minus lambda, 3 minus lambda, minus a minus 8. So it's going to be 3, let's see, minus lambda, minus 3 lambda, plus lambda squared, plus 8. We have lambda squared minus 4 lambda plus 11 is 0. So lambda is going to be 4 plus or minus. So it's going to be 16 minus 44 all over 2. So it's going to be what? Minus 28. I break this up and write this, 
I'm, as a complex number, I'm going to have 4 divided by 2. Oops. It's going to be 2 plus or minus 1 half square root of 28 times the square root of minus 1, which is i. Let's see, I can make that a little nicer. So let's see, so this is what, um, what 4 times 7? So I can bring that out. So that's square root of 7 times i. Now notice, this is a real valued matrix. And because the characteristic polynomial is real valued, I'm always going to get complex conjugates for my eigenvector, or eigenvalues. So one eigenvalue is going to be 2 plus square root of 7i, call that lambda 1. Lambda 2 is 2 minus square root of 7 i. So let's find the eigenvectors. And what am I going to do? I'm going to work with, so if I take 1 minus lambda 1, 4 minus 2, 3 minus lambda 1, this is going to be 1 minus 2 plus square root of 7 i minus 2, it's going to be a 4. 3 minus 2 plus square root of 7 i. So 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Minus square root of 7 i. So I have to carry the minus through. It's 2, 4. Oops. 3 minus 2 is 1. And carry the minus through. So I get that. So that's going to be, I want to find the null space of this matrix. do that, what am I going to have? So let's see, so this is going to be minus 1 minus square root of 7i minus 2, 4, 1 minus square root of 7i times xy is 0, 0. If I put this in an augmented matrix, I'm not going to worry about the zero zeros because that's just going to be all zeros there. Oh, yuck. Okay, so let's see. Let me do this. So for row two, I'm going to leave row one alone. And now for row two, what am I going to do? I'm going to take. So I'm going to take this thing times row 2. And then I'm going to subtract a minus 2 times row 1. So I'm just going to use that times this. And if I subtract those two things, I should get a 0, right? Because I'm going to take this times this minus this times this should give me 0. So what do I get? Uh, sorry. So let's see, so if I take minus 2, oops, so for now I'm going to take row, yeah, so minus 2 times minus 1 minus square root of 7i, it's going to be, give me 2 plus 2 square root of 7i. That's going to give me the coefficient for minus 2 times that. Now I take the minus 1 minus square root of 7i times minus 2. Multiply through, and I get the same thing. So this minus this gives me 0. Now for this term, let's see. So now I'm going to take this thing times that. All right, so I'm taking this times row 2. So I get 1 minus square root of 7i times minus 1 minus square root of 7i plus 2 times 4 is 8. If I FOIL this out, I'm going to get a minus 1 plus square root of 7i, and then I'm going to get a, so this times this plus this times this. Now I'm going to have 1 times this, so it's a minus square root of 7i 
and then minus square root of 7i times minus square root of 7i is going to be plus square root of 7 squared i squared plus 8. So this minus this is 0. So we have minus 1. 7i squared is going to be minus 7 plus 8 is 0. So I'm going to get a 0 there. And I kind of knew that should, was going to happen because uh, right, I know that if this is an eigenval eigenvalue, then I should get a row of zeros here. And so life is good. So if I think, go back up to here, I'm trying to find x and y that make that 0. So this says I have minus 1 minus square root of 7i times x plus 4y is 0. This is my pivot, so I solve for my pivot. I have a, subtract that and then divide. Let me do this in two steps. So I subtract the 4y from both sides. Now I divide by that term. Let me get rid of this mess. So what do I have? I have x equals minus 4 or minus 1 minus square root of 7i y. Uh, I don't like to see that on the bottom, so let's see. So let's take, multiply the top and bottom by minus 1 plus square root of 7i. Get that. So let's see, multiply the minus 4 through. I'm going to get 4 minus 4 square root of 7i. I foil this out and have minus 1 squared minus square root of 7i minus 1 times that plus this times this, so that's going to be minus a minus. I'm going to have a minus square root of 7 squared times i squared times y. 4 minus 4 square root of 7i. Those cancel. That's going to be a plus, so I have 8. So this is going to be, I would divide through by the 8. So there's my x in terms of y. So my eigenvector xy, I can replace the x. The y is a free variable, so I can factor out the y. And there's my eigenspace, is anything times this. In fact, I can just call that the eigenvector. If I just let y equals 1, then that's going to be the eigenvector associated with this eigenvalue. Oops, sorry, the eigenvalue then was, in this case, um, 2 plus square root of 7i. I could go through and do this now to figure out what's going to be lambda 2, but here's the thing. If I plug in lambda 2 is 2 minus square root of 7i, what's going to happen? This thing would change sign, that would be a plus that thing would be a plus. Everywhere I see an i, I would just flip the sign and make it negative, and I would basically get this same thing, only I'd have a plus there. So I don't necessarily have to go through and do all that, because, so what do I have? I have that. If lambda 1 is 2 plus square root of 7i, the eigenvector is anything times 1 half minus 1 half square root of 7i, 1. The other eigenvalue is 2 minus the square root of 7i, so this is the complex conjugate of that. And my v2, everywhere I see an i, I'm going to replace it 
with the negative and there's my eigenvalues and my associated eigenvectors with each of those eigenvalues.